One of my first memories is of family picnics in Genesee Park. It seemed like we were going a long ways away, and yet we got there very quickly. You needed to watch your radiator gauge because the cars would overheat, and one of the reasons for having uh, water pumps in all of the parks was so that people had water for their radiators. You can stand on the ridge where Kit Carson stood and had his last campfire. And the view along that ridge is absolutely stunning. And you're standing at a place where a lot of history happened. It's amazing when you see early tourist ads for Denver, you don't see 17th Street or even Union Station. You see some lady in her sunbonnet looking out on this inspirational scene. The secret jam in Pence is really just the trail up the hillside to Independence Mountain. And that trail was built by the CCC in the 1930s. Right below Doubleheader Mountain near the Meyer Open Space Ranch in Jefferson County off Highway 285, and I came across a single bull elk all by himself who had no fear of man. It is a natural amphitheater made probably millions of years ago. In 1964, I was 10 years old and I got to see the Beatles perform. I think the mountain parks allow us to escape into nature, but they allow us also to escape into history. I had no idea that there was that much protected open space between Denver and Mount Evans. I mean, I knew about Red Rocks, and I knew about Daniels Park to the south near Castle Pines. I knew about Summit Lake and Echo Lake Parks. But I didn't know that there were 22 conservation areas that basically protect the Ponderosa Pine Forest, the granite mountaintops, the view sheds, the things that we see from downtown Denver that very well could have had mega homes on top of them now if it hadn't been for foresighted smart people 100 years ago. J.B. Walker, my great-grandfather, was, was a great visionary and he was a tireless promoter of Colorado and the natural beauty that we have here. He approached the Denver Chamber of Commerce, the automobile interests, and the realtors, and basically promoted this idea that this is what could set Denver apart, that we had this resource that was untapped. And he wrote very eloquently about the beauties of Colorado, the coolness of the air, and how compelling Colorado could be to visitors if only these groups would stand behind and develop these mountain parks. When Mayor Spear finally got on board with that idea, the Denver Mountain Park system really took off and the public embraced this idea. And the amazing thing about it to me is Colorado, which depends so much on tourism, didn't get around to establishing state parks until 1955. Mayor Spear is way ahead of time here designating these parks. They did everything first class. They hired the most visionary landscape architect in the United States and in perhaps at the time in the world, the Olmsted brothers. And they had just completed a master plan for the national park system and were fresh to the idea of that interplay between man and landscape, man and nature, that makes these parks so important. Frederick Law Olmsted Jr. himself comes out, rides horseback through this whole chain of mountain parks and encourages Denver to put together a string stretching all the way from Lookout Mountain south to Morrison. The original objective for the mountain parks was approximately 41,000 acres. That was beyond the city's ability to buy and to develop and to manage it. The city ultimately came up with about 14,000 acres. Since that time, other agencies have acquired land, and so the whole product is now 41,000 acres of public lands. Saco de Boer was so profoundly influenced by the National City Beautiful movement, and he worked with Olmsted in designing the Lariat Loop. One could hardly imagine any roadway in America that has more drama and rises to such an elevation and crescendo in such a short time. The Chief Hosa Lodge, designed by Jacques Benedict, which is in fact this great symphony of the materials right from that site, just 
piled up and assembled into this public cathedral for celebration of the landscape. The picnic parks are kind of the ones along Bear Creek that are really pretty spectacular. These individual little jams near major roadways like Phileas. Some of them have trails, some have fishing access. As time passed, roads got better, the cars got better. There were mountain parks farther away, so then we have mountain parks such as Summit Lake and Echo Lake, way up in the mountains, 13,000 feet high, tremendous diversity up in the Alpine area. Later on, George Cranmer, another great visionary, he was the person who developed Red Rocks Amphitheater. Well, he loved to ski, and he said, we need a place where people can ski. So he developed Winter Park Ski Area. That's a great hallmark of the Denver Mountain Parks, is you can golf, you can ski, you can hike, and see a tremendous variety of landscape. Another one of the great masterpieces of this country that belongs to the Denver Mountain Park system, designed by Burnham Hoyt, is the Red Rocks Amphitheater. And those who perform there and those who experience those performances never cease to be awed by the power of nature and great design in harmony. After the Second World War, the focus was really on the city's parks, in the city. So the Denver Mountain Parks were sort of neglected. In 2008, there was a master plan created for the Denver Mountain Parks, which was the first plan that had been created since Olmsted did his plan in 1914. So it was long overdue. One of the things that they discovered when they put the plan together was that many people who were using mountain parks had no idea that they were in a Denver Mountain Park. The master plan has specific recommendations, but it also has system-wide recommendations. And within the system-wide recommendations, we really looked at how the Denver Mountain Park system could be better and improved for trails and access and recreation and a connection into the surrounding open spaces and surrounding communities. There's only so much that taxpayer dollars can do to maintain and to preserve those parks. So the Denver Mountain Parks Foundation was created several years ago to enhance what the city can do in order to keep our parks at the best possible level, not just for people today, but for future generations as well. Part of what is important for people to understand is that as the population increases in Colorado, these resources are going to become even more valuable as open spaces. There's 70 some percent of Denver's open space and they have historically been funded with 1.4 percent of the, only the parks and rec budget. The future of the mountain parks is bright if they're used for what they can be used for. They shouldn't just be warehoused and they shouldn't be done piecemeal. They need to be taken a look at in a larger sense of forest management, recreation opportunities, and intergovernmental cooperation. When you think about the goal and the fundamental value of the Denver Mountain Park System, it's having a system that close to home where everyone from every diverse background can really participate in that connection to nature. Connecting kids with nature is a critical part of every child's upbringing. There's so much we can learn from being outdoors and being in nature, and they're an ideal laboratory for teaching kids of all ages about the wonderful world in which we live. It is the opportunity to put a park, a trail, an open space, a wildlife area in everybody's backyard so that every child and family has an opportunity to retreat to nature and to feel better, not just physically, but psychologically. You think about those who imagined this place for future generations, and to say that this will be held in public trust forever was an absolutely magnificent dream. And it's important to not only preserve the Denver Mountain Parks, but dream magnificent dreams like this again for future generations. My hope is that you'll see the city of Denver doing a better job, being better trustees of the mountain parks, and really doing everything we can to promote and to engage people more in our mountain parks. So the future, I think, is a collaborative one. And I think the time to get going on that is now. I think the centennial of the mountain parks really marks the beginning of a new generation of parks and open space stewardship in the Front Range. 
The Denver Mountain Parks are truly a precious resource that our predecessors have left us, and I think we have a huge obligation to future generations to preserve and enhance those mountain parks. Summit Lake Park and the herds of mountain goats everywhere is very special and how friendly they are to people and how good the photos are because they're intimate with you. These are very special alpine places that are as good as some of the places I backpack 50 miles to get to.